Hi, everybody, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing tonight, Coco? I recognize that I didn't crack a cocktail before actually deciding to record this with you. So. Oh, that's some bullshit. I know. Let's see how sober <laughs> I'm going to be this episode. So fun and sober. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to be a lot of fun because we're talking about the theater. 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 <laughs> were you a theater kid? Um, yes and no. I, yeah. I only did musical theater i didn't okay. i never acted in a stage play um i always because i was more you never of a did singer a straight play as opposed to a gay play yeah i never did a straight play that was kind of yeah. lowered for me so <laughs> it's not really my journey um i, I did do straight plays did really? i did pride and prejudice and i hated it yikes <laughs> so bad that was mr bingley was oh my the, the worst character because he's the most boring character i've been there done yeah, that wrote yeah. the book um, I think the first, so I was in three, no, I was in four musicals in uh-huh. high school and we did, uh, we did Les Mis mm-hmm. and you know what character I played? So, you know, that scene like right before, right before, not Eponine. Oh my gosh. What is the main girl's name? The Fantine. Guy? Fantine. Yeah. yeah. So I was the guy who tries to rape her. Oh, That's the part I that played. was the part that you got. Yeah, oh. the one where she smacks him right, and then he sings yeah. his little song about how she's a whore or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's the character I played. That oh, was, that's um, fun. Yeah, that's a... Really was a confusing time for me. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not your favorite role. <laughs> no. And then the, my favorite role was I got to play Simon in Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, that's cool. And so he does that, like, that big dance scene song or whatever so i got to do that that was fun yeah that was good my least favorite was definitely bingley and then (laughs) my most favorite role was mark cohen in rent that was definitely my favorite like so many words i had a lot of fun i know it is a lot of words because he's like the narrator pretty much of that musical a narrator and the singer yeah and and the answering machine well it's a rock opera so it's like all singing (laughs) so it's like yeah, all singing narration. A little, I mean, Mark has more talk. He, I'd say Mark has the most talking parts. That just feels so overwhelming to me. Yeah. I would never want to play Mark. Like, that's, yeah. just, that's too much for me. Yeah, yeah. I would I would have gotten all those words wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thick. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, so we're talking about musicals today, because as this is actually going to be our fifth part to our queer media and representation. Yes. We actually realized we were skipping over musicals. And no, we are not going into stage plays after this. We are done with this series. Wow. Um, it's been fun. Thank you for being on this wonderful journey. Hopefully we get picked up to do an HBO special. <laughs> That's definitely happening. <laughs> what? If they can just see how gorgeous I am in my drag right Convince now. yourself. Delusion. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> I know, in both of our drags. We're actually... Um, we actually are basing our looks off of famous um, musicals tonight. I am wearing the full getup from Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Oh, cool. Yeah. French flip curls, all of it. I got my denim on right now. I got my boots and my fishnets. Yeah, it's weird watching her with these gold boots. I'm sitting in this uh-huh. chair. And me, I'm just living out my kinky boots fantasy. <laughs> I'm being Lola with my tall red boots on and my red shiny gown. Yes, yes. <laughs> we look gorgeous. We and look... my shake and go, because yep. that's what was worn in that. This is what we do for you listeners. <laughs> This is what we wear. <laughs> With a perfectly blended smoky It eye. doesn't work unless we are completely done up. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I don't want to record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why I don't have my martini right now. Um, <laughs> so, um, for all of our straight listeners out there who don't listen to musicals, we're we're kind of talking about two subjects. We're going to talk about some musicals we like, and we'll have queer, queer themes and queer um, characters, obviously. But we're going to kind of talk about what musicals mean to the queer kids. And to drag queens, because it, mm. honestly, it's influenced drag performance a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, like, let's just even start off with how uh, Donatella talked about Rent. So, like, we're going to talk about Kinky Boots and Rent right now, Mm -hmm. because those... um, I just recently watched uh, the Kinky Boots Broadway version on Broadway HD, Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um, parts in that um, musical for drag queens. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was just so fantastic to Mm -hmm. just have, like, a whole, like, ensemble of just drag queens. Oh, yeah, that's... It's awesome. Like, it's... It's really cool that, I mean, and then you also have, you know, Angel. They don't really go into Angel's, like, identity in in Rent, but Mm -hmm. that's, like, one character that was, like, very um, influential when it came to drag and musicals, Um, you know, Today For You. 
tomorrow for me. Yeah. Yeah, like, so, you know, it's funny, they never do, I've had, I've watched Rent about a billion times, the musical and the, and the movie, and they do, they never really talk about Angel's sexual orientation, mm-hmm. um, or, I would like, say gender identity, or gender mostly. identity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, because they do talk about gay quite a bit with those yeah. two characters. Um, but yeah, no, seriously, it was, um, they never quite mentioned it, and it was okay, because it didn't, it wasn't necessary for great storytelling. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. No. And so that's that's kind of that's kind of the thing, listeners. Like, so musicals. I know everybody thinks musicals can be quote unquote queer because a lot of queer kids like are they're like awakened by them, yeah. like to a degree. Because I think it's because in song we don't have to shy away from the weird or the unnatural or the taboo. Well, and you're around other theater kids and the chances are of, you know, the other male theater kids being gay. It's like a 50, 50 shoot most of the time. Uh, Absolutely. I, you know, like there's still plenty of theater kids that are, you know, grew up to be very straight, handsome male actors that I went to, um, like high school and college with, but there's also just a whole lot of gay in theater too. So much. So like, I feel like it's already kind of a safe place when it comes to performing because Mm -hmm. most gays, I'd say a lot of gays like theater. I've definitely met some that aren't too keen on it, but Mm -hmm. um, we don't talk about them. No. Sativa. Sativa. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's it's so weird. Like um, when there's just not a a band of queer people who like musicals. I know that sounds like so stereotypical, but like a lot of our people are in musicals. Yeah. Like, um, we weren't going to talk about this, but apparently the whole cast of, um, what is that musical called that we were just looking at? It said the whole ensemble. Chorus line. Chorus line. Apparently. I mean, I don't know. I I don't. (laughs) I'm not super familiar with the stage version of that show, so I don't know how queer chorus line is, but But I guess. I I think it it could be though, because when you think about it, a lot of that, a lot of um, male dancers in musicals mm-hmm. um, happen to be queer. Oh, yeah. Because of the safety of that. I would say a lot of guys in entertainment. Yeah, for sure. Like yeah, it makes sense. Like, it just does make sense. Yeah, so, I mean, that's definitely, like, a very queer-influenced musical because I'd say a lot of queens perform songs mm-hmm. from Chorus Line and a lot of people really love that musical and it's it just has a lot of LGBTQ themes as well. Yeah. Um, so getting on with more drag queens, actually, because usually a drag queen may play this part, or a trans yeah. person, is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, yes. Uh, Iconic. <laughs> Frank and Furter. I, um, yeah, I, I remember, like, my dad just saying, that's a weird show. <laughs> like, I really wanted to, I really wanted to see it because everyone would talk about it. And he'd mm-hmm. be like, nah, you don't want it. It's weird. It's weird. I'm like but I feel like I'd like it. And so I watched it when I was in high school and I loved it. And I love the Rocky Horror. It's so picture. good. It's like, so good. I, I love the lips. The lips are some of my favorite. Do you remember when we shadow casted Rocky Horror? We did Horror? shadow cast Rocky oh Horror. Oh my gosh, in that <laughs> cold ass theater. Oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. So the theater that we were doing it at, like a week before we were supposed to do this event, mm-hmm. like got like their power got turned off or they mm-hmm. were like they they lost their liquor license. Yeah. Like all sorts of things were happening. So they couldn't charge for liquor there. And then also it was like cold as fuck. And so Coco and me and the rest of the cast were just getting real, real drunk to try and make it through this <laughs> night in this cold ass theater in the basement, in the dressing room in the basement. Yeah. We were just getting real drunk. And Coco was um, Columbia and I was Magenta. Yes, I it was is. Columbia. And I remember, I. the funny thing is, like, doing a shadow cast version of that, not to get too off-topic listeners, but um, it's a long show. It is so long. To be acting out the things people are doing. Yeah, yeah. My good golly gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our, we all looked really good, though. We looked the parts. I remember mm-hmm. I even had my, like, magenta wig, and I even had my, like, the whole, like, space outfit at the end, mm-hmm. too. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, you did. I remember Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And we walked out from the back, like down the alleyways. Uh It was actually, I really wish like someone would have filmed it because it actually was a really cool experience. Yeah. We have some pictures from it. We do. Um, with me and Donna and our aprons. Yeah. Like the mask. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, so stupid. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We had fun. Oh my gosh. That was, that's cool. Sorry. A little trip down memory lane. Um, (laughs) if you've never seen Rocky Horror, pretty much, um, 
it's a problematic film nowadays, but it's also a cult classic, so it still stays around um, and it's still widely accepted. It, I mean, they even did because you know there's like the live shows that are happening now, so like they did Hairspray Live and The Wiz Live, yes. and um, they also did Rocky Horror Live. They did with Laverne Cox. With Laverne Cox, yeah, yeah. playing um, Frankenfurter. Frank yes. Oh, by the way, for listeners, if you don't know what Rocky Horror is, that's where the time warp comes from. Yes. Yes, and everyone should know where the, what Rocky Horror is. And if you don't, shame you on listen? Shame on you. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, I just ASMR'd you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, goodness. But yeah, so, yeah, Rocky Horror. Well, if, I feel like we should go from drag queens to puppets. So, Avenue <laughs> Q. <laughs> Avenue Q is great. Um, yeah. Um, there was a gay character in Avenue Q. Yeah. And then, and then also Avenue Q was, I don't know, it, it had the whole, like, Sesame Street themes and stuff to it. it. And it was just, like, dirty, fun puppets. And it had, it was just a really fun musical. I enjoyed it. The only the gay character in it, I think, is, like, suffer like, like very closeted and, like, mm-hmm. not wanting to come out. And yeah. it's, it's a very familiar trope in musicals, I'd say. Um, and then also in the second part of our series, and actually in the first part, we talked about this a lot, about we do wish, like, if so, if we do get famous from this podcast, I'm asking everybody in Hollywood who's now my friends, um, please make stories <laughs> that are not just about queer kids coming out of the closet. Oh, yeah. Oh, heavens. And that's actually kind of why Rent was so great. Oh, my yeah. gosh, we can talk about one for that, because the characters in Rent weren't struggling with sexual orientation. No, they weren't. They were struggling with a multitude of other issues. Like, I mean, yeah. The AIDS crisis. Yeah. I mean, that's why... Well, it wasn't even just that. It was addiction. And addiction. It was... um, Uh, And poor. Yeah. Like, poverty. (laughs) Being poor. It was uh, civil rights, you know, like, classist issues, you know. Yeah, lots of class issues. You know. But, and the one thing, too, though, that... That's actually really good, because, like, I really identified with those, because I don't... Having characters who already knew who they were, like with mm-hmm. Angel, Angel and Colin, were really important for my development mm-hmm. after... Because I, I, I found out about Rent in high school, actually. Yeah. And um, and my friends were telling me about it. They're like, it's cool. It's about all these gay characters doing, like, drugs or whatever. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of crazy. Um, anyway, so, like, after I heard Seasons of Love, because, you know, mm-hmm. everybody heard Seasons of Love. It's like oh, everybody's yeah. graduation call it, uh, high school song for, like, 30 years. Yeah. Um, I heard it at a dinner theater for the first time when I was a kid <laughs> like, in middle school. I heard it at a dinner theater, and I was like, I love that. <laughs> it's so pretty. But, yeah, no, like, that, like, that's why I think that was so different. And so that actually, let's take us into um, March of the Falsettos. Yeah, um, so that was something that actually, Touche was the one that kind of put me onto it first because she did a song from it. Yeah. And then Autumn was like, hey, we should watch this um, musical. And so we watched it, and it is so good. It it also, um, it, it's very complex because it deals with a man and a woman who are in a relationship and have a kid, and the man is gay and is seeing this other man Mm -hmm. and basically he like wants to keep the family still together though Mm -hmm. so he still wants to parent while his wife is kind of losing it watching her husband be with this man and um yeah and and it basically kind of shows the span of like is it is it kind of like Uh, decades or or is it it's it's probably a few years years, yeah yeah it's not because she gets remarried yeah yeah yeah, she gets remarried it's not it's not decades i would say it's probably like five years maybe um but yeah it it kind of chronicles the span of like how ever since that happened their relationship as a family has evolved into something bigger yeah you know and the gay characters in this why i like them so much um, like the themes of the first two parts of this series, is they were very gay and like very hot for each other. Uh-huh. Like their songs together showed like the passion that they had for mm-hmm. one another. Like um and like their fights were passionate and yes. very silly and ridiculous. And of course, throughout the course of the musical, um, it goes into being something a little bit more serious because the way that the musical does end, um, a little bit of a spoiler alert here. The way the musical big spoiler <laughs> big spoiler alert. The way the musical ends is that uh, the gay, one of the gay characters dies, actually, yeah. um, because of uh, AIDS, yeah. actually. Yeah. 
And so it's it's like a really heartwarming scene. It's really sad and it's whatever. And like the way that they depict this scene and like this character getting sick was just really eye opening. And like I'm not actually sick and tired of those stories per se because those stories were so real and we lost so many people to the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. And so those stories will always be impactful. But um, but I really did love the fact that we weren't like going through another coming out of the closet moment. Yeah. Um, Specifically because I forgot my contact my cocktail. I um I need to take a break. Sorry. Um, so Donna, <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing this evening? Uh, I don't know. Let's uh, let our viewers know after this brief commercial break. Listeners, not viewers. Listeners know. Bye. Hey everyone, are you ready for the next digital interactive drag experience? Tune in for Introvert September fifth at six p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Headliners will include Ursula Major from Season 1 of the Boulay Brothers' Dragula and Alexis Bevels, the winner of Camp Wanakiki Season 1. Also, we'll have Jessica Lahore from the Denver drag scene. Tickets are $5 and you can buy them at www.thecdsdrag.com slash introvert. It's a podcast with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast. With Coco and Donna, tell a podcast. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be Alphaba coming back because I feel theatrical. I feel I feel very musical. I feel very um, happy that we're talking about musicals. I that's so funny. Um, so that's from <laughs> Wicked listeners. Because I know some of you out here are like, what the heck was that supposed to be? Uh, <laughs> Um, that was sad. We can't talk about Wicked in this episode because they didn't actually really have any queer themes or no. Queer but we can talk about how drag queens have how it's influenced drag. You know, yeah, it definitely because I has. feel like so many drag queens do an Elfie, and I mean, you and I have done it. Autumn yeah. and I have done it, an Elfie and Glenda thing. Yeah, that because I knew you song. It's very iconic in queer yeah. circles. Mm-hmm. It it's really is. You for good. I want to talk about one specific musical that basically shaped me from high school on, hmm. and that was Spring Awakening. You know, I've never seen it. It's so good. So Spring What's Awakening Spring Awakening is a book um, by Wedkind, who was a German author, and he wrote this book about adolescents basically coming into their, their manhood and womanhood. Mm-hmm. Um, there are gay themes in Spring Awakening. There's two gay characters. Um, mm-hmm. There are um, themes of rape, um, and sexual abuse in Spring, Awa- in Spring hmm. Awakening. There are themes of suicide in Spring Awakening. Um, and it is a very deep, sad, dark musical, but it is put to pop rock music really? by Duncan Sheik, um, hmm. who was a one-hit wonder in the 90s. And um, so it's, it's like basically... Or pop punk. It's pop punk. It's like hmm. pop rock, pop punk kind of musical. Um, it's a rock musical. It's really great. And it has some of my favorite songs. It's really badass. And it's something that when I first heard it, it basically, when I was in high school, I was like trying to do that thing like, oh, I don't like musicals. Uh, They're kind of, you know, because I was in the closet and trying to pretend like I wasn't homosexual. (laughs) Um, But then I heard Spring Awakening and I was like, damn, this sounds like it was playing on the radio and I want to keep listening to it. And so I did. And uh, yeah, no, it it definitely, it's really cool. It has like very strong themes. And um, these, these teens are basically in a school in Germany in the 1800s. And it's about them coming into their sexuality and kind of coming into, um, or, and dealing with these, these societal issues um, and, and their stories. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I might have to check it out. It might be on Broadway HD. Yeah. Please sponsor us. (laughs) Um. (laughs) (laughs) Leah Michelle originated her role in it and then so did Jonathan Groff and that's how they got yeah Leah Michelle and Jonathan Groff and then they were both on Glee together that's really cool and ended up together on that show yeah ended up together spoiler alert sorry I did it in the wrong order (laughs) whatever if you haven't seen Glee by now yeah get on board yeah um, so that brings me to one that changed my life when I was in my early college days, which was Alter Boys, which is an off-Broadway musical. Um, yes, I know I included off-Broadway in here. Please sue me. But no, I'll um, talk about my off-Broadway one next. Yeah. So, okay. um, Alter Boys is just a story about four Alter Boys and whatever, and they're, they're pop stars. And mm-hmm. like, that's what makes it funny. But one of the character is abundantly, stereotypically, incredibly gay. 
um, who's in love, who is mostly in love with the lead singer of the band. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, actually, is there four? There's five of them. There's five of them. Sorry, there's five of them in Alter Boys. And um, and that's, like, so the song Epiphany that I love the most is a song about him thinking you're gonna he's going to come out of the closet to everybody, but he just comes out as a Catholic, and that's why the song is so funny. But the reason this whole musical resonated with me is because I was super into boy bands for so long in college. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it lasted, like, three months, which in college is a long time. Um, and so I was, like, listening to all this stuff, and that music came out, and I was like, oh, my God, I identify with this storyline so much. Because mm-hmm. it's about finding yourself and like understanding your truth and like so i really recommend it people the music is great and actually most of the musicals we've talked about like the music is great yeah yeah for real um the one that i want to talk about that i don't it didn't ever have a broadway debut it had um some big success in the uk on the west end but heathers is actually off broadway Mm. um it's based off of the 1980s late 1980s movie um with winona Ryder. And Heather's influenced gay culture in so many ways. Oh, yeah. One of those big, like, mean... One of the first, if not the first, Mean Girls movie. Yeah, I think think it was. Yeah, because then in the 90s you had Jawbreaker, the 90s version of Mean Girls. So I feel like every decade kind of has those, like, clicky... Mean Girls types of movies. Yeah, I love um, Heather's. My favorite song is Dead Girl Walking. Oh, it's so oh, good. Oh, good God. I don't know why I can't get that song out of my yeah. head whenever I hear about it. It's just so good. And <laughs> there is a song about gay themes called My Dead Gay Son. And oh, <laughs> there's the musical. I have not heard all the music. It's when they frame... So basically, if you've seen the movie, they, they frame like the quarterbacks and, the, and one of the other football players to have like a, a gay love story. They like frame that they killed each other in like this big oh, like geez. gay love story and so the dad it's the dad singing his song oh my <laughs> about God. his dead gay son Jeez. but yeah it's dark it, I mean Heather's was a dark comedy so um, it's lovely I really enjoy the music from it um, and uh, <laughs> you know what did you have a brain tumor for breakfast, Heather? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shut up, Heather. Shut up, Heather. <laughs> Candy store. Anyway, um, How very. <laughs> gosh, it's so good. Um, so, switching more to like a little bit more of a serious note, the two musicals I want to talk about just kind of in conjunction because I talked about one of them already is like, so musicals gave the opportunity for black people to have a, a, the ability to be on stage. So I'm not going to talk about The Wiz per se, because mm-hmm. um, that was one of the first that gave black people a full black cast, like the opportunity to perform on Broadway, and did it to obviously a retelling of The Wizard of Oz, because we're also not talking about Wicked. Mm-hmm. Um, but the two I want to talk about are Kinky Boots, and then, of course, uh, The Color Purple. Now, The Color Purple has a predominantly all-black cast as well. Yeah. And the thing about Seely, if you know this about The Color Purple, the book and the movie, especially in the book, Seely was a lesbian. She wasn't mm-hmm. bisexual. She was a lesbian. And obviously, Hollywood, when they created The Color Purple movie, um, didn't really do that with her. Like, mm-hmm. And then in the musical, I haven't seen the whole thing, so I don't know how close they get there either, but in the books... Seely was very much a lesbian. There's a line that pretty much where she's talking to Sugar Avery and, or actually she's talking to Mister, I think, later in life. Mm -hmm. And it basically says, do you not like men? She's like, I don't know. She's like, but I know I like women is pretty much what she says. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that that whole musical just really resonates with me because it's obviously black empowerment and same with Kinky Boots. Like Lola is like having a starring role as a drag queen, a black drag queen, by the way, because I didn't mention that earlier. The lyrics are written specifically for a black drag queen, yes. And it's just, I don't know, it's just mind-blowing in a way that it's just, I don't know, it's like full circle. Yeah. It's totally full circle. That's awesome. The representation in Broadway has been great for many years, and um, it's good to see it included, including more and more, like, diverse stories. We, We see it more and more as time goes on because we have more writers that um, have more to tell and come yeah. from different backgrounds. Well, and then if let's think about it this way too, listeners. Like, we have heard every straight story in existence. Mm-hmm. Every single one I've heard twice. Yeah. Like, and so when you, even if you pop a gay character into a Cinderella story, the most common story that we've all heard. like That's representation. Even that's representation, but it's also different. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many ways you can tell straight people. They're like, ooh, what if we did, like, Cinderella, but, like, in space? And you're like, 
It's the same story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same story. Make with, it Cinderella. Make it know? Cinderella. Make it interesting for the rest of us, because honestly, it does. It gets a little bit boring. Yeah. So, um... Let's talk about some of the classic musicals, too. You know, like, we have... We have things like the producers that have gay themes in it. Yes. With, um, you know, the whole, like, springtime for Hitler. Springtime for Hitler and yes. Germany. And we also have uh, musicals like The Birdcage, which, um, or Le Cage Fa, not The Birdcage. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it is on Broadway as Le Cage Fa, but translates to The Birdcage. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the song I Am What I Am, the classic gay anthem, comes from. Uh. Oh, and it had many disco covers after that too. Did it? Yeah. I, oh yeah. Gosh, I feel like so. Like every time we talk to Donna, I'm like, God, I am some uncultured. Maybe swine. not many, but there was a very prominent disco cover <laughs> too. I am what I am. Very, I'm very. I'm gonna have to look that up after this is over. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I am what I am was great. I mean, and it it was uh, Harvey Firestein was the one that saying that on Broadway, I am what I am. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. And you know, in certain roles like that, so like, let's talk talking about Hairspray real quick, because Hairspray's been around for a and while, And Harvey too. Firestein also played um, uh, Edna. Edna. In, in Hairspray. Was it for the live version? For the live version, And yes. I think he also probably did it on Broadway at some Yes, he probably did it on Broadway for a while, and that was also a role that Divine also did mm-hmm. as well. So... That was actually, sorry, in talking about drag queen roles, um, Hairspray, there mm-hmm. was a predominant role for drag queens doing that, too, yep. with beautiful costumes that always changed on Broadway, and that oh, was yeah. so cool. And yeah. Hairspray, once again, is talking about uh, segregation, um, and talking about segregation yeah. in the 1960s and integration. Yeah. Um, and it also is a body positive, body positive movie, where yeah. the fat girl actually gets the hot guy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's some really great, strong themes that align with queer identity, I think, in Hairspray. Mm -hmm. Even if it is made for a specific time period. And um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. There are, there's some crossover in in themes there. Um, What is your favorite song from a musical to perform? Or just like top three? Okay, so I know one immediately... Um, and they're going to be musicals that are not necessarily on the list because they mm-hmm. might not have queer themes. Yeah. But uh, one of the ones I love performing to is Out Tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other two I love performing to, um, actually I'm going to name four because okay. I don't want to cheat them. Um, so uh, the other one I love performing to is I Can Hear the Bells, of course, because mm-hmm. it's like my, it's my go-to wedding song for me and my husband. Um, and then of course, um... I like any pretty much anything from Dreamgirls. Yeah. Like gets me rolling real good. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what do you like for? My top three. I, I love a good ballad. I really love like a good ballad y number. So I let's see, I really love Sh- She Used to Be Mine from Waitress. That's one of my favorite. She... Oh, that song makes me so sad. I love performing that song because it is so sad. Like it. <laughs> oh, sad. Because the thing is, it's sung about like a woman who's pregnant and like has a baby and is like singing it to her baby. But it also could just be like you singing to your past self and like you know the the things that you feel like oh. the your past mistakes or things that you feel would put you in a different place now, you know? That makes me so sad. Yeah. What are the other two? <laughs> um, I like Sugar Daddy from Hedwig. I, oh, yeah. I sang that live with a band at um, Glam Rock, and that was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. My third one would probably have to be... I used to love to sing um, some Rocky Horror, too, but yeah. I would probably have to say we used to do bring on the men quite a bit. bring on the men yeah bring on the men from jekyll and hyde that yeah. was one of my anthems as well yeah yeah i would say that yeah you had you had quite a few you also did i am what i am quite a bit too which was great yeah yeah um oh and you also did wig in the box real good wig in the box is fun i love that song <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like naming her like repertoire yeah. but like by the way these 800 other songs I, that you did from i musicals. can't remember what the this song is what musical it's from but everybody's girl, oh, gosh, what is it from? I used to have it in my head. Isn't it everybody prefers blonde or something? No, like no, 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 no. That would, I mean. Wait, what song did you do from? Je- um, that was uh, Gen- gentlemen Gen- prefer blonde. My one of my very first songs I performed was from that. Um, <laughs> it was called "Ain't There Anyone Here for Love." Oh that yeah, that song. <laughs> yeah. Is, gentlemen, did is that a musical or is I that? I don't a, know if they a made movie? it into like a stage show, but mm-hmm. you know, the, a lot of those movies from that time were movie musicals. 
Yeah, they were like, Donna, wow, she just perfect. Is there something from Casablanca she performed? <laughs> she says. No, that musical scene was not made for a lady. Um, so, no, she did not perform no. that. <laughs> As we just go through her repertoire. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to say that I do love nowadays performing to Land of Lola. Oh, yeah, Lynch, you do. I you do. do. I, Favorite group numbers for musicals for queens oh. to do? Or that oh. you see at shows or, you know. Oh, so group numbers. Um, so obviously Mama and Big Girl Now mm-hmm. from Hairspray is so good. Cell Block uh, Tango is a classic. Cell Block Tango is It's done to death, classic. but you know what? Keep doing it. it so <laughs> true. Because I always want to hear those monologues. What did you do, girl? What, what did, did you, you do? do? <laughs> yeah. I popped that gun. Or you yeah. popped that gun one more time. Yeah. And then, of course, anything from Dream Girls, um, because most of the songs are trios and whatever, and, um, that's just... Yeah. Of course, like the Dream Girl song, Natively. Um, Hamilton. Hamilton. Oh my gosh, Hamilton. Why didn't I talk about Hamilton on this thing? There's no gay characters in it. That's probably There's why. Um, but yeah, Satisfied is also another song I've been just going to town on yeah. recently. Yeah. But yeah, it has some great group numbers too. We just actually performed mm-hmm. as the Skylar Sisters um, for a show called Drama Camp here yeah. in town. Yeah. That was also effing fantastic. What, um, uh, darn, what is it from? Wouldn't you like to have Big Spender? Big Spender from yes. this uh, Cabar- it's not no Cabar- no no it's uh, not it's um <laughs> I know oh what gosh. it is <laughs> I can't remember I can't remember what it's if called. If you remember, but, listeners, put uh, it in the comments. It's like sweet something uh, something charity. Mm. Yeah, it's like sweet charity. I'm pretty sure it's called sweet charity. Look it up right now. Okay, I'm gonna look it up <laughs> because Donna's yelling at me. We're gonna Monet and um, Bob this shit. <laughs> Uh, let's see. No musical. Yeah, yeah what? I don't. I'm pretty sure it's from Sweet Charity. I'm not. Yeah. Uh. 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 Hey, big spender, Sweet Charity. Okay. There you go. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's Sweet Fossey. Charity. It's Bob Fossey. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So we figured it out, listeners. <laughs> you. I know you were on the edge of your seats for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I um. Let me see. Wait. No, I haven't asked you any of them. So what um. Let's see. What it would be your what is a song from a musical you've always wanted to perform to but you never have? Like because I can't sing it vocally or I just haven't done it yet. You just haven't done it yet but you've always wanted to. Well, you know, I always thought I would make a really good Tracy Turnblad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Um no. Uh if I could perform any song from any musical. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I've performed most of the ones that I want to perform, to mm. be honest. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, I have. But, oh, Heathers. I, I really want to do Dead Girl Walking. I haven't done Dead Girl that's Walking. That's funny. That was mine. Really? When I was asking the question. That's what mine was. I was like, <laughs> I've never performed a Dead Girl Walking, and I want to perform to yeah, that song. I want to sing it really bad. Yeah, and my group number that I've always wanted to do, which we've been kind of practicing not really, would be Candy, candy Store. Candy Store. We, I want to do yeah, that, too. Yeah. It's going to be a Heather's year for us listeners. Yeah, I know. And actually, if you tune into the next Introvert, which, you know, you heard about in our commercial, um... I actually am going to be doing a song from the last five years that I've always wanted to perform live to at a drag mm-hmm. show. Because um, I love the last five years. It's absolutely fantastic. So tune into that. That's a really good musical. It has Anna... It's so good. Kendrick. Yeah, yeah Anna Kendrick in the movie version of it. In the mm-hmm. movie version. And that yeah. boy who's really attractive. Yes, who was on The Flash and other TV shows. Jeremy Jordan. Jeremy Jordan. Oh, very attractive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good deal. Um, I think that actually probably brings us to the end of this episode. I think it does, too. But I hope you enjoyed being really gay and musical with us. Yeah, I hope you really enjoyed that, too. Do you and want to take us away with a riff of, of your favorite musical? Um, uh, Sing gosh. something. Oh, my gosh. Putting gosh, you on gosh. the spot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, goodbye. No, I'm just <laughs> Oh, my God. I didn't even talk about Ladies Who Lunch. I should have left with that. Oh, um, yeah. Yes to the light is lunch. Everybody laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you can find us at a gem of a secret podcast.com listeners yes um that's where we we upload every thursday sometime throughout the day um we're never ahead of schedule so every time you're hearing this we've recorded it probably the week you heard it <laughs> probably yes definitely Oh, good deal. So make sure to listen to those musicals. We've lifted it off a bunch. We're not going to link them on our website. You can do the work with Google. 
Yep. <laughs> yep. And be sure to um, take care of each other. 2020, I know we're in August, but this year has been an absolute and utter mess. And Vote. there's been so many deaths. Yeah. There, We are coming up on election season. Um Vote your conscience. Vote Mail-in your ballots for, I believe, North Carolina are mailed to their citizens on September third. So it's starting. Like we're damn. Like we're almost in September. Like days away. Yeah. So make sure you, because like even right now as we're filming this, the Republican National Convention is currently on right mm-hmm. now. Um, my thing is, we're not gonna actually go online and we're gonna bash everybody. I mean, we hate Trump, sure, but what? Yes. Um, Vote your conscience, everybody. Vote your heart. Um, vote and and also push for who you're voting for. Tell the internet who you want. Like let's not let's keep the negativity to a minimum and just talk about who we want and why we want them. Yes. And it shouldn't be a negative against someone else. It should be I want this person because A, B, C, D, and E. Yeah. So do that. That's what I'm asking for, listeners. And actually, in your comments, tell us who you're voting for. Yeah. Or tell us some of your favorite musicals. Yeah. Um, and, and we will definitely be getting more political as it gets closer to... Oh, absolutely. We will be. So, because you know what? it's our show. And not yours. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we're dumb. Okay, we're gonna end here. Okay, okay, okay. All end right. pose. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Katya. No, no, no. <laughs> my name is Coco Gem Holiday. And we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of A Gem of a Secret podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.